Welcome to the Geoflow video series, Making Geothermal Easier. If you haven't already reviewed the video on flush cart operation, you should view that video before viewing this video on power flushing, since power flushing should only be used after the standard flushing procedures have been followed. Thank you for joining us. Safety should be your number one concern when using the flush cart. Let's take a look at some considerations. First off, I always use a grounded electrical outlet. The flush cart plug is equipped with a ground connection and is designed for a 15 amp breaker. Never attempt to disable the ground fault circuitry. Failure to observe safety precautions may result in fire, injury, or death. When using the flush cart, consider safety when handling antifreeze. Acceptable antifreezes are propylene glycol, ethanol, and methanol. Never handle or mix antifreeze in an enclosed space. Pure methanol and ethanol are extremely flammable and the fumes or vapors can ignite. Only use pre-mixed or non-flammable antifreeze with the flush cart. Use appropriate safety devices including eye protection. Failure to observe safety precautions may result in fire, injury, or death. Thank you for your attention. Power flushing is a technique that can be utilized to help purge air from a ground loop when the standard flushing procedure does not eliminate all air from the loop. For most systems, power flushing is not necessary. This procedure utilizes the flush cart pump and municipal water pressure together to provide maximum system pressure to compress and purge air pockets. In effect, the flush cart pump is in series with the municipal water pressure. The following procedure describes this process and assumes that the steps in the standard flushing purging video have already been completed. Since the power flushing procedure adds fluid to the tank from the water supply, lower the tank level to avoid overflowing before starting this procedure. With the pump running, close the inch and a half deadhead valve and close the two inch tank isolation valve, then open the half inch fill valve. Monitor the pressure after deadheading. It will quickly climb to 80 to 100 PSIG. When the pressure reaches 80 to 100 PSIG, close the half inch fill valve. Then open the inch and a half deadhead valve and the two inch tank isolation valve simultaneously. Repeat these steps providing a surge of pressure to the ground loop until the air has been purged. Remember, the only way to tell if the loop has been sufficiently purged of air is by deadheading the pump and watching the fluid level drop at the sight tube. It should drop no more than about 3 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch on a typical residential system. The actual drop will depend upon the amount of pipe in the ground and the fluid temperature. Thank you for watching the GeoFlow video series. For more information, check out our website at www.geo-flo.com.